Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to Guru Maharaj. So, thank you, Maharaj, for uh, giving a valuable association and time. So, today we are very fortunate to have His Holiness uh, Chandra Mali Maharaj to enlighten us on Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 4, Chapter 30, and verse number 8. So, Thank you so much, Maharaj, for giving your valuable association and time. No, now I would like to hand over the call to you, Maharaj. Thank you so much, Hare Krishna. Thank you, Hare Krishna. My obeisance is to all the devotees. Hare Krishna, Sri Prabhupada, Um, Yes, could you uh, please put the uh, verse up? Srimad Bhagavatam, 4th Canto, verse number 30, uh, text number 30, uh, I'm sorry, 4th Canto, chapter 30, verse number 8. Um, this verse is a landmark verse. It's really one of the more important, important verses in the entire section. And it really is a verse that devotees pick out and speak on in very key gatherings. So please take real interest in this particular verse, especially Srila Prabhupada's purport, and the translation is amazing. <clears throat> Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Varam Vini Dwam Badram Tobo. Yuyame Nirpanandanaha. Sarudena Pitak Dharmas Tustaham Sarudena Va. So the Lord is speaking, the Supreme Personality of God had said, he's speaking to the sons of King Prachini Barhe, who are known as the Prachetas. My dear sons of the King, I'm very much pleased by the friendly relationships among you. All of you are engaged in one occupation, devotional service. I'm so pleased with your mutual friendship that I wish you all good fortune now you may ask a benediction of me. Hmm. So this is a very interesting statement by the Lord. He's re re requesting them to ask for a benediction. Purport, since the sons of King Prachini Bharishat were all united in Krishna consciousness, the Lord was very pleased with them. Each and every one of the sons of King Prachini Bharishat was an individual soul, but they were united in offering transcendental service to the Lord. The unity of individual souls attempting to satisfy the Supreme Lord or rendering service to the Lord is real unity. In the material world, such unity is not possible. Even though people may officially unite, they all have different interests. In the United States, Nations, for instance, all the nations have their particular national ambitions, and consequently, they cannot be united. This unity between individual souls is so strong within this material world that even in a society of Krishna consciousness, members sometimes appear disunited due to having different opinions and leaning towards material things. Actually, in Krishna consciousness, there cannot, cannot be two opinions. There is only one goal, to serve Krishna to the best of one's ability. <laughs> if there is some disagreement over service, such disagreement is to be taken as spiritual. Those who are actually engaged in the service of the Supreme can Personality of Godhead cannot be disunited in any circumstance. This makes the Supreme Personality of Godhead very happy and willing to award all benedictions to his devotees, as indicated in this verse. 
we can see that the Supreme Lord is immediately prepared to award all benedictions to the sons of King Prachini Parishat. Omagyan timidandasya gena jena salakaya chaksu unmilitam neinantas my shri guru vei Sri Chaitanya Mano Bistam Stav Titam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kedam Mayam Dadati Swam Padatikam Ama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prastaya Bhutale Sri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swam Tumayane Namaste Saraswati Deve Govavani Pacharine Deve Sri Sasin Nivari Pastyatya Dev Sitarine Panchakalpa Tarum Vishya Kripa Sindhu Vaibhacha Patitanam Pavana Yo Vaishnava Yo Namaha Namaha Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sri Rasa Vibhar Bhaktivinoda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Before I begin, I'd like just to mention or bring up, I know recently I received <clears throat> the notice from Mother Shamagori that one of the dear devotees had recently departed, Srinivas Jagannath Prabhu. And uh, I just like to offer my sincere prayers to the Supreme Lord to uh, award him the benediction of receiving his special mercy. Um, personally, our interaction was very small, but I think I can remember one or two times when we were together. Um, personally, I found him very serious in his practice of Krishna consciousness along with his good wife. Um, anyone who engages in devotional service, anyone who takes shelter of a bona fide spiritual master and en engages in devotional service is never lost. Uh, they may no longer be physically present, <clears throat> but they are existing somewhere. And most likely, where since they have done devotional service to the Lord in such a way that was pleasing to the Lord, then we can, uh, we can rightly conclude that their destination has been something very auspicious <clears throat> and for something very elevated. So Bhaktivinoda Thakur on the uh, Samadhi Mandir of Ashila Haridas Thakur, he wrote this famous epithet, which reads, he reasons ill that say that Vaishnavas die when thou art living still in sound. Vaishnavas die to live and in living spread the holy name around. So a devotee never dies. A devotee may leave one place and go to another place and do the same thing. Just like Prabhupada would use the example of a wheat husking machine. If you take a wheat husking machine and you husk wheat with it, and then you take that same machine and you bring it to the heavenly planets, it will do the same thing, husk wheat. So wherever a devotee is, they will serve the Lord, they will glorify the Lord, and their life will always be auspicious. As soon as one enters into the realm of devotional service, Everything becomes auspicious in a due course of time. It's just a matter of time. They will reach the supreme destination back home, back to Godhead. And I'm sure after knowing this wonderful family, although my brief encounter wasn't so extensive, I uh, see that both of them were very, very dedicated, sincere devotees in Krishna consciousness. So death is a doorway to eternal life. And sometimes we see that it comes in an unexpected way or in a way that seems to be early in one's life. But Krishna has a plan 
And sometimes for very special souls, he doesn't allow them to stay in this material world too long. So they have to suffer so they can come back sooner. So many times we know that the one who engages in devotional service is under the uh, para prakriti, the daiva prakriti, the supreme shelter of the Lord's lotus feet and is never lost in any situation of life. And gradually we'll make it back to the spiritual world. <laughs> So I just wanted to offer my prayers, best wishes. And of course, feeling a little sad that such a wonderful devotee is no longer present. That is our loss when these devotees leave, um, us who have to stay here. There's one story where Ramanujacharya was leaving the body and his disciples were experiencing some real sadness and they were actually really overwhelmed and he looked at them and he said I should be I should be crying for you because you have to stay here <laughs> I'm going to a better place <laughs> so he was making a point that death is never for a devotee it is never something inauspicious it always brings one closer to Krishna Okay, so I'd like to now begin speaking about this verse, and especially in relationship to Krishna's statement in the very beginning. Krishna says something very, uh, what we say, powerful. Uh, <clears throat> he says, because you are united together in friendship, relationship, and your focus is one, devotional service. There were nine brothers. They were called the Pachetas, sons of King Prachinda Barhisha. They also had received the mercy of Lord Shiva. And so in that receiving that mercy of Lord Shiva, they worshiped as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And then they pleased the Supreme Lord by their, by their devotion and their unity. So this is the uh, power of the spiritual movements, the unity of devotees. Uh, just like Prabhupada sometimes would use the example, which is something we know of, those of us who grew up in America, it's called Aesop's Fables. And there was one fable. These are like little truisms that little sutras that give knowledge. And that was if you have a bundle of sticks and you take them in your hand and you try to break them, it'll be very difficult and practically impossible. But if you take out each stick, it's very easy to break them. So Prabhupada would also use that to illustrate that, yes, as long as we stay packed up together in our devotional service, and here, it says something also that sometimes even devotees appear to be disunited in the execution of Krishna consciousness. But that is not possible. The appearance is, or as Prabhupada indicates, sometimes a devotee will lean towards material attachments or material ideas but as long as the devotee stays in the association of devotees and continues to, to execute devotional service, all these things will gradually be reduced and uh, vanished in due course of time. So we see that uh, devotional service in itself is unity. And devotees, in order to then, for them, us to really understand deeply a devotee should learn to appreciate whatever service other devotees are doing. Just like we have the example of, uh, of uh, Ram, Lord Ram Chandra, when uh, there was a need to cross the ocean, the Lord arranged for the monkey soldiers to throw big boulders into the ocean and Ram, 
wrote his name on these boulders and because he did, these boulders floated and they became a bridge. So Hanuman, he was the one of probably the most powerful personality there along with Jambavan. And then he was doing what we say some really significant bridge building. But there was one little, some people say squirrel, some others say spider, that was uh, wanted to help too. And he became inspired to kick little grains of sand to try to offer his help. Hanuman was thinking, oh, this, sand, this little squirrel is in the way and we're probably going to step on him. So tell him, move aside. This is, this is not work for you. But Ram noticed that. And Ram said to Hanuman, oh, actually, he is doing just as much as you are. And what Ram was indicating was <laughs> that if one is working to their capacity in devotional service, then that is, that is perfection. <clears throat> of course, we always should think, I can give more. I can give more quality in whatever I'm doing. And if possible, I can also add some devotional service. But what the point is, is that devotees should appreciate whatever service another devotee is doing. Because devotee association, or devotees in general, are rare species. <laughs> in the sense that how many persons actually seriously take up spiritual life? Very, very few. The number is below 1% of the population because um, people are not interested in spiritual life or if they are, they're interested in getting material benefits from spiritual life which we really, we call that some form of religion. Sometimes it's called uh, churchianity, that you worship the Lord, but your motivation is to receive something material. But those who actually seriously take up devotional service as given by Srila Prabhupada and the Acharyas, that devotional service is about rendering our time, energy, resources, intelligence, words, facility, and ultimately our emotions in the service of the Lord in order to please the Lord. So if someone is sincerely trying to do that in whatever capacity they're expressing that in, that means whatever service they're doing, that's wonderful, that's glorious. And therefore, devotees should appreciate that. And one that appreciation is a form of bhakti itself. Because as it says here, when devotees are united in devotional service, how pleased the Lord is. Because this idea of disunity is so strong in the material world. There is this principle that we follow, unity in diversity. The unity is devotional service, the diversity is how we serve the Lord. So the unity connects us with each other and the diversity is the way we express our devotion to the Lord in the form of different types of services. And that's bhakti. But in the material world, people cannot be united because they don't have a focus. There's a lot of diversity, but there's no unity. Everyone is focused on their own interests. And sometimes they come together as a group or as a society, sometimes in large numbers. But their, their focus is to fulfill their own desires through this type of, you know, what we say, uh, organization. So we see, and this is the nature of the material world, we see there's disunity on all levels, on international level, on national level, on community level, society level, uh, individual level. And even within the families, there is some, there's much disunity because they all have, the, people have different focuses on what 
it means to be part of the family. And they fight sometimes or they go away. So, but devotees understand that, okay, you can serve the Lord that way and I can serve the Lord this way. The point is that we're serving the Lord. That's the whole problem thing. And that is real unity. And sometimes we may mistakenly think, well, well, my service is better than another service. I'm out there distributing books and this person's there cleaning the temple. Of course, we understand how important book distribution is. But at the same time, from the perspective of the absolute truth, you might say, well, if the book distributor is out there trying to gain something material, some popularity as being a book distributor, or some association with the non-devotees to enjoy some kind of sense gratification, and the devotee in the temple is simply sincerely trying to clean the temple, and who's better? <laughs> Krishna sees the, uh, the uh, mood of the devotion like that. The mood is trying to please the Lord. So, and of course, if both are trying to please the Lord, then that's absolute. So on the, on the absolute platform, or on the platform of pleasing the Lord, everything is absolute, which means that the Lord is accepting everyone's service according to that mood. So, uh, yeah. So this verse is very significant. It's kind of a landmark verse. It's been, I remember when I was in uh, Mayapur and uh, His Holiness Radha Swami was asked to give a class. Um, of course, at that time, devotees could choose which class, which topic they wanted. And one very senior lady she came up to him and said, Maharaj, please speak on this verse. And he gave a very powerful class on this verse. And then he indicated in the class that he was requested to speak on this verse also. And so it is a very essential because it is the basis for the success of our Krishna consciousness. When we are united as a, as a as individuals in serving the Lord. That means appreciating differences, appreciating uh, what we say, different ways that we carry out our devotional service. Of course, uh, devotees don't do anything outside of it and expect that that is devotional service. It's like, uh, it says that we have to chant 16 rounds every day if we are initiated and if we're not, we're aspiring to reach that goal or we are reaching it. But we might think, well, you know, meditation on the Lord is just, that's what we do when we chant, we're meditating on the Lord. So I won't chant, I'll just meditate on the Lord. I'll look at his picture or try to put a, you know, something in my mind. But then again, that won't be pleasing because it's not the instructions of the Lord. It's not the instructions of the spiritual master how to glorify the Lord and how to purify the heart. In this. So we see sometimes people concoct their own ideas and what is spiritual life and call it just as good as anything else. But unless it's under the guise of an authority who is a representative of, this, of the Lord, then that type of creation will not go very far. Uh, we might use the example, <clears throat> you know, just like a person might be asked to, uh, <clears throat> to do something and they'll say, well, um, yeah, you're asking me to do something for you, but I'll give you an example. Um, a husband's out there working, and so he's coming home. And the wife is thinking, my husband's coming home. You know, um, I have to cook the evening meal for him. But she doesn't cook. 
what he likes, and she cooks what he likes, she likes. She was thinking, well, I'll just cook what I like, and then I'll give it to him. <laughs> so that's devotion to oneself, <laughs> using another person as an object. So the idea is to follow the instructions of the spiritual master in the execution of devotional service. And there could be a variety of how that is expressed, but still, the main point is that there's unity when everyone is following devotional service as given by the Supreme Lord himself and the spiritual master. One cannot add, concoct, or take away from the process and expect it to get the same uh, results, same spiritual results. Okay, so these are some points. This verse is very, what we say, mm -hmm. fundamental in understanding the essence of Krishna consciousness because cooperation, co-operation, C-O-operation, means we operate in a unified way <clears throat> and therefore so many things get done and so many devotees make progress when we don't work together if we fight over small things or if we we have some personality conflicts and we take that into our devotional life <clears throat> then we find that everything becomes difficult and sometimes even spoiled. So to practice devotional service, there is some austerity and that austerity is learning to work in a group in such a way that everyone can function nicely and fulfill the, what we say, the aim of the group. In other words, if you have a particular goal, everyone is working towards that goal. But everybody, Prabhupada also talks about how <clears throat> um, when devotees fight, then it becomes real pain on the, on the body of the spiritual master. And he uses the example, the father is taking massage from his two sons. And one son is on one side of the body of the father and the other son is on the other side. So each of the sons want to be known as the best servant to their father. So what they do is they, while they're massaging their father, they punch the father on the other side where the other brother is doing and that way it makes it look like the other brother is causing pain to the father. So in that way, who suffers? The father. <laughs> so when devotees fight, spiritual master feels unhappy and he feels some, some uh, anxiety. So devotees should try to work together in a cooperative way. And that's easy. Cooperation is based on communication. When there's open and honest communication, then everyone can express their differences, resolve their differences, and go on with real business and devotional service. <clears throat> when we lack this communication, then we assume, and a lot of times we make mistakes in relationship to, uh, uh, to others in their devotional service. It's always good to have uh, to open one's heart and discuss things in a very honest and open way. And that way, devotees, if there's any differences, any anxieties or whatever, can be resolved in an intelligent way. But sometimes we see that even when devotees are trying their best, they somehow can't get along. And usually they can't get along. It's not because of devotional service, it's because of personality conflicts. So we have to somehow create a spiritual personality. In other words, start to cultivate those qualities that are in the mode of goodness, such as humility, tolerance, pridelessness, patience, 
uh, detachment from our own ideas on how everything should go on. <laughs> a lot of the, what we say, principles that make up the good qualities of the devotee, when they, we practice those things, then it becomes easy. And not only easy, it becomes natural to work together in devotional service. Okay, so there's a lot we can say on this. This is a very extensive topic, and we have in the past given seminars on this topic in a very detailed way. Uh, okay, so we'll open it up for some questions. We'll take questions from the devotees in, uh, in Charlotte first, and then if the, the other devotees who are on um, can also ask questions, but we want to give priority to the, the devotees who are working under uh, the devotees in Charlotte, first priority. Thank you so much, Maharaj, for uh, giving your uh, very inspirational uh, talk. And uh, um, it encourages us and uh, like very much through the examples you show us like how we should deal. And as Prabhupada also wanted us to cooperate, you also teaches us the same thing. So thank you so much, Maharaj. There is so much to learn and to practice. So now I will request devotees uh, if uh, they want to ask Maharaj anything. So please go ahead. Thank you, Hare Krishna. Uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj Dandavat Pranam. Thank you Maharaj for giving your association every Friday. Uh, Maharaj, I have a uh, like uh, the Lord has appeared here in the 800 form. Is there any specific name, Maharaj, for uh, the, the Lord's 800 form uh, who has appeared here? It's, it's, it's a Vishnu form. Okay, okay. Yeah, that we know it's a Vishnu form. Okay. Uh, but parti what particular Vishnu form, I'm not certain. We'd have to do a little research on that. Okay, okay, and 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 Mara, just sometimes uh, when this uh, when the Lord advents, when the Lord's uh, advents, sometimes some incarnations they are uh, they are with a specific name, like, uh, but sometimes some incarnations, uh, you know, they are not that popular or that that known, like uh, the Lord when He appeared to Dhruva, Dhruva Maharaj, right? And here in this case, but when when He appears, sometimes. Uh, like uh, when he appears had uh, nursing Madhev, right? So those, uh, like when he, uh, those times it is very known and a specific name also is given, right, Maharaj? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, there's Vishnu manifestations, there's Narayan manifestations, and then there is, of course, there are six categories of incarnations. Manvanavar, there's Manu Manvanavantar, Manu Avantars. Um, there are Shakti Vesha avatars, there are Leela avatars, there are Guna avatars, the Purushotam, uh, Purusha avatars. So there are six categories of incarnations of the Lord. But if you read the Bhagavatam, you'll find a lot of the names in these other categories are also this, like for Dhruva Maharaj, that was Prishni Garba, who appeared. His name was Prishni Garba, it was a Vishnu forearm, Vishnu form of Dhruva. So yeah, um, like I was just reading, reading the eighth canto, and it gives a whole list of the incarnations the Manu incarnations. So some of them you never heard of before, but they appear in a particular Manu and they perform a particular service in relationship to stabilizing the universe by giving support to the 
demigods headed by King Indra. So yeah, there's gradations, but all the incarnations of the Lord are fully powerful. They just exhibit a particular power in relationship to their service or their mission in the material world. Yeah, oh, okay. Oh, okay, Maharaj. Maharaj, one, one other question. This, uh, the Prachetas have uh, chanted the, the chanted the mantra given by uh, mantra or the mantra given by Lord Shiva. Mm -hmm. Right? So, so any specific reason for the Lord appearing in the 800 form, is it related to the mantra that they have been chanting? Yeah, that's how it works. You chant the Hare Krishna mantra, you, Krishna will appear that way. If you chant the Sringadev, you will appear. In other words, you're calling the Lord by according to the particular mantras. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much, Maharaj. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, we can open it up to anyone, anyone who wants to ask a question now. Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to your holiness. Thank you for this wonderful lecture on uh, how to cooperate and take our movement forward. As your holiness was speaking, I kept remembering Mother Krishna Nandini. Mother Krishna Nandini won the Exemplary Leadership Award for leading us at the uh, Vision team for her exemplary leadership and her wonderful qualities. The way she united so many people and made us a team is truly remarkable given that she led us for 22 years. And she brought out the best in everyone. We were all so different from different nationalities, different countries, different professions. And she just united all of us with her exemplary qualities. I really want to remember and, and pay my tribute to her this way. Thank you so much for this wonderful lecture. Thank you. Yeah, Krishna Nandini is, was glorious in her devotional life how she brought people together, yeah. Hare Krishna Maharaj, Pranam. Thank you so much for the wonderful class. Uh, Maharaj, there's a question in the chat also. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, shall I read it, Maharaj? Please. <laughs> Hare Krishna, dear Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. This is from Bhakta Roberta. Cooperation means communication. Isn't it, Maharaj, that Vaishnava etiquette is crucial for good communication and then cooperation? If we don't know the subtle level of communication, we will probably have different difficulty. They are not... Yeah, yeah that's, that's correct. Mm -hmm. They are not impediments for devotional service, but it is easier then. Please, if you can verify your small servant, Roberto. Yeah, Vaishnava etiquette is the basis of everything we do. Philosophy is not as important as behavior. Behavior is actually the, the, the ornament by which a devotee is known. When Prabhupada was asked, um, how can you tell who is a devotee? Prabhupada said, he's a perfect gentleman. So gentle lady, in other words, one who gives respects to all, yeah. This is part of the culture of Vaishnavism to give respects to everyone accordingly, accordingly. The Vaishnavas don't disrespect anyone because they see within the heart of every living entity, Krishna is there. So communication is based on, yeah, on, on 
But I was using that as an example to say that, yeah, this is where you have to start in order to bring about unity. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, um, please accept my humble obeisances. August to Prabhupada, August to you. Guru Maharaj, may I ask a question? Uh, uh, yes, go ahead. So Guru Maharaj, uh, thank you for the class. It's much needed class and uh, I'm very lucky to have joined today. So Guru Maharaj, uh, you said about the, the unity and the conflict resolution. You gave some important principles. But Guru Maharaj, uh, in the name of uh, Krishna consciousness, so I am in a conditioned state. I, I am not uh, in a stage where if you, if some, if not, if somebody tells me to do anything for Krishna and I'm ready, because uh, my, I am still attached to my psychological makeup. Let's say that I like to do, let's say, cooking. That's that's my preference. That I want to serve the deities or Vaishnavas by cooking. But if I'm told by the authorities uh, that no, um, you cannot, you have to go and uh, do uh, plant the vegetables in the garden uh, or milk the cow. <laughs> but that's not my personal area of interest. Okay, I can do it if I'm also given a chance of cooking at the same time. But if the cooking is completely taken away and said that, no, this is the only way you have to do it. This is Vaishnava etiquette, follow the authority. So this becomes artificial behavior at my level of devotion because I'm a neophyte. So how, what is the principle I should apply there? Because I don't think I'll be able to carry on for a long time in such association without doing what yeah. I personally like. You can, you can express that. It's not that we just give orders and then you just run and do something. You can express that, uh, yeah, I will do this service, but I, but it is something I don't really find myself so enthusiastic about. It. But if you can give me another service or you can help me get over this mental block about doing this service, then in other words, we can inquire from the authorities once the service is given and express our feelings and opinions and see what kind of response. If the authorities are sensitive, it's not that we force devotees to do things. When the beginning of the movement, it was like that because there was a shortage of devotees and there was a need to move fast because Prabhupada was using all the resources he had to spread Krishna consciousness in the limited time he had. So people were given services that was difficult or even something that was, they didn't want to do, but because that was their feeling of surrender, they did it. But the principle that governs that relationship is that one can inquire from the authority about one's feelings and get some clarification and also express uh, their own opinion on how they would like to serve. Okay. Oh, yeah. thank you. I mean, if you just go ahead and don't say anything and then keep it all in, then as you say, after some time, you might, you lose your enthusiasm. Yeah, you have to express it, but you express it in a, in a humble way, in a mm -hmm. detached way. And that way there's some communication and understanding. And if they have someone else who could do that service, then fine. But sometimes service, certain services are emergency services and there's no one else available like that. So if we're giving an emergency service, we may be able to do that under the circumstances. But generally in the long range, we want to work according to our, how best we can serve. And that reflects back onto the authorities to be very uh, conscious is seeing how how people can serve in the best po possible way, and that's Van Ashram Dharma, which Daivi Van Ashram, which Prabhupada wanted to institute. Still, we're trying to institute it, engaging people according to their propensities and their natures, and that way their service becomes exemplary, and our society really flourishes like that. 
but there's emergency situations sometimes when there's no choice and then emergency situations are not the norm. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hi, Krishna. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Prem Kishore. Hi, Krishna. Thank you for coming on today. I didn't expect to hear you, but thank you. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances, Maharaj. Um, all glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to yourself. Um, I have a question regarding communication that um, we have been generally advised by senior devotees that we should make clear communication. And I have read many times Prabhupada saying that we should be simple in our dealings. So simple in our dealings with my neophyte mind, I understand that we should be honest. Whatever we are inside, we should be outside. But obviously taking into consideration that we shouldn't be very harsh, you know. Um, so I sometimes get confused because I'm also very simple, um, not posting myself, but yes, I'm very real in my communications. So sometimes I see that uh, not everyone can take honest communications and they might feel offended or they might feel it very provoking or, you know, I don't know how how in other ways devotees take it. So how to strike that balance, how to understand Yes, such and free, yeah, it's called such and freeum, such and buryum, to speak the truth in a pleasing way. Mm. Learning, uh, you're learning how to give what is needs to, to be given, but in a way that it, that is pleasingly delivered, and that's mm. an art. Sometimes we don't know how to do it, but we have to learn because. You know, you can tell a person, don't do this, or you can mm -hmm. tell a person, I think you should do this. Mm. When you tell a person, don't do this, you know, it just leaves them flat. When you leave, tell them, well, I think this is, this is better. And then it gives them some idea. And then the communication is easier. That's just a, just a kind of a simple example. Right. Okay. Uh, yeah. Such and such and preem, such and brilliant. I'll give you an. If you'd like to hear a story related to that, I I can speak something. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Please, Maharaj. Yeah. Yeah. Balabancharya used to come up and to Lord Chaitanya, and he would, um, you know, speak some of the things that he understood. And but he was very direct, and a lot of times he would contradict. He would say certain things that Lord Chaitanya was not pleased. And Lord Chaitanya would respond to him and defeat him in a very simple way, a couple words. So Balabhacharya, he was very attached to Lord Chaitanya, so he kept coming back with different ideas. But Lord Chaitanya could see that he had some pride, so the Lord didn't really accept much what he said. So... You know, this went on, of course, there's a whole, a whole pastime related to this. But uh, later on in our society, the devotees were writing an article about Vallabhacharya's relationship with, um, with uh, Lord Chaitanya, and it was published in the Back to Godhead magazine. That particular article got back to Sumar Sumati Marariji, who was a lady who sponsored Krish, uh, Prabhupada's trip on the Jaladuta. She was the owner of that steamship line. Uh, she felt offended when the devotees had written about her spiritual master because she's a disciple of Vallabhacharya. So Prabhupada apologized to her on behalf of the disciples because she wrote Prabhupada a letter expressing her dissatisfaction of the article. But then Prabhupada came to the devotees who had wrote the article and said, uh, you have to speak the truth in a pleasing way. Satyam priyam, satyam bruyam, he means that example. So everything they said was true, but it didn't, it wasn't expressed in the way that was, that could have been expressed. Because Valbacharya is not a small person, he's a great, 
He's a great saint, actually. So they were, because Lord Chaitanya didn't give him any, any, any position anywhere, the devotees misunderstood Vallabhachari and were a little heavy when they wrote that article. Thank you. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you. Hare Krishna. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, please accept uh, my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to your grace. Uh, for, thank you so much for giving us your valuable association every Friday. Um, uh, thank you Maharaj for the wonderful class. So my question is, uh, you know, uh, yeah, cooperating. Cooperating basically means uh, that um, so, some sometimes uh, I mean in in cooperation means there is adjustments and uh, we see the other uh, devotees value value their suggestions for example if we have a suggestion that the, this service can be done in this way and the others come up with uh, the other suggestions so we <clears throat> try to include everything so um, um, my question is sometimes when um, there has, to be an authority, there has to be an authority to make a decision mm. and people should acknowledge that authority and ultimately accept the decision. Uh, if their people are sincere, even if their particular opinion is not accepted, well, they can understand, well, still I should work together because it's coming, the authority says this is the way we should do it. If there's no authority, if there's democracy, then democracy breaks down when you have differences of opinion because there's no one to give the final, uh, you know, say. That's where we come back to the spiritual master or to the leader of the yatra or somebody who's in a position to make a decision that the whole group will acknowledge. Yeah, thank thank you, Maharaj. That Does that helps. answer your question? Yeah, yeah. One part of the question. The other part is, um, I mean, what about I mean, how to handle resentment in the heart? Like we know so many things that uh, that this is Krishna's desire, and we need to cooperate and resentment uh, in, based on some experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with some devotees. Well, that's a process. There's three ways. <laughs> you can forgive and forget. You can forgive and not forget. And you can approach the person and discuss it. <laughs> forgive and forget sometimes is, doesn't always work because <laughs> it may cause further problems. Forgive and not forget means to be careful not to fall into that situation again. But at the same time, you can understand that, okay, there was some wrong done to me, but I can go on. But now I'm not gonna let that happen again because I don't want to, um, you know, re resurrect the same uh, difficulty. And the third is to approach the person in, in a humble way and discuss it and try to overcome, express your feelings in an honest way. So you have a choice which one you want to choose. And there's practically no other choice like that. If you want to live with the resentment, that kills the person who carries the resentment. It's not so much the person who had caused the resentment, but the person who carries it suffers more because it's like I remember I was in, uh, in one, I was giving this topic, this same lecture to a group of people in London in the Bhakti Vedanta Manor. <laughs> and um, there was a large group of people who came from another city. So nobody was local. They were all from the another city in the UK. I didn't know anybody, hardly. 
So I gave my talk and there were some questions, but at the end, one lady approached me and she said, I didn't, I didn't want to ask my question in public, but I haven't want to ask you. I said, okay. She said, I have this problem with this one lady. Um, you know, she did something to me many years ago and I can't forgive her. So I says, well, how long ago was that? And she said, 25 years ago. So I practically, uh, you know, I, I was sitting on a low cushion. That was luckily, because if I was sitting on a high cushion, I could have, could have damaged myself by falling off. But I fell off a low cushion, so it wasn't so bad. Um, but to, make, to get to the point, I was shocked to hear how she was able to go on and carry such feelings of negativity and resentment towards a person for such long, a long time. And I basically tried to, I, I couldn't deal with the situation, honestly. I basically said, for your own good, you have to, you know, move on and just forgive. Because if you don't, or if you need some help on how to forgive, you should seek that out. But you can't keep carrying it. It's going to, you know, it just destroys you. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Maharaj. Yeah, I mean, this is Kali Yuga. Kali Yuga means the age of quarrel and hypocrisy. So quarrel is everywhere. Even at the slightest, you know, we say differences, people find reasons to quarrel. And sometimes when there's even no reason to quarrel, they quarrel anyway. <laughs> This is Kali Yuga. So we have to understand this whole, whole age is permeated with animosity towards each other. It's just, the, it's just the way this age is. So we have to somehow rise above that and, uh, you know, work together for a higher purpose. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Uh, it really helps. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Okay, is there anyone else? <laughs> Guru Maharaj, I have a question. I believe that for our movement now to really progress in a very marvelous way, we need exemplary leadership to lead and guide the movement nicely at all levels. So how can we cultivate exemplary leadership qualities? Yeah, you, yeah, you be the example. Everyone has to, has to fly their own plane. In other words, of course, on the society level, we are doing training programs to train devotees in various leadership qualities and in categories of leadership also, such as leaderships in the family, leaderships in the different ashrams, leaderships in the different uh, services. But in general, we have to work on ourselves. <laughs> Be the example for you what you want to see others become. <laughs> it's, it's interesting. Um, when we do something wrong, we want people to forgive us. But when somebody does something wrong, we're not so easy to forgive. <laughs> Mm 
Hare Krishna. If no one has any questions for Maharaj, then we can end here. Thank you. Okay, thank you everyone for joining. Thank you, Maharaj, for giving a valuable association and uh, very important instructions so that we can follow seriously, sincerely on the path of devotional service. So we can offer obeisances. Vancham Kalta Rubisha Kipa Sindhu Devita Patita Nam Pamu Vishnu Pyo Namanamha Om Kuti Vishwan Niki Jai Shri La Prabhat Ki Jai Shivan Bhagavatam Ki Jai His Holiness Chandra Mali Maharaj Ki Jai Thank you so much Maharaj Hari Krishna Thank you very much Guru Maharaj Hari Krishna.